So, good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL course on classics in total synthesis. In the last class we talked about the total synthesis of strychnine by Woodward. So, we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of uh, strychnine by two more groups. Uh, today we talk about uh, total synthesis of strychnine by Viresh Ravel's group from University of Chicago and the second one is from Larry Overman from University of California. Okay. So, when you talk about uh, total synthesis of strychnine, each group use some key reactions to construct the center 6 membered ring. Ravel's group use two key reactions, one is uh, an intramolecular Heck reaction, the second one is an intramolecular Diels-Sahl reaction to construct this 6 membered ring. Okay. So, the 6 membered ring they constructed using intramolecular Diels-Sahl reaction. But the first retrosynthesis is they started from isostrychnine. Okay. So, from isostrychnine if you know uh, as I discussed in the Woodward synthesis, if you treat with base, so the double bond, the double bond will migrate and at the same time oxamicyl will take place which will give you strychnine. So, the precursor for strychnine is normally isostrychnine or they can also use Wieland Kumlich aldehyde. So, in the case of Ravel's total synthesis, he has used isostrychnine root. So, how he made isostrychnine? So, this is where the first key reaction, key disconnection he used was the Heck reaction, an intramolecular Heck reaction. So, that he envisaged from this starting material as you can see here you have the vinyl iodide. So, palladium insertion can take place and then you have a double bond. So, the intramolecular palladium catalyzed heck coupling followed by migration of the double bond will give you isostrychnine. Okay. So, that was the first and important disconnection Ravel has used. Next he thought this can be made from this intermediate. Okay. So, if you see this what he has to do is remove the ester and then attach this whole side chain. Okay. Now, if you look at this particular intermediate, you can see a cyclohexene unit. Okay. So, whenever you see a cyclohexene unit, one reaction which should come immediately is the Diels-Sahl reaction. Okay. So, the Diels-Sahl reaction so can be easily thought of to construct this compound. So, how do you do? If you if you see this diene, okay, the diene and the dienophile. This is the dienophile and this is the diene. Okay. So now an intramolecular Diels-Sahl reaction should give the tetracyclic compound. And how do you make this compound? If you have an amine, okay, and an aldehyde, so then you can couple to form an enamine, okay. So, what you need is the whole unit should be an aldehyde. Okay. Then the aldehyde can react with this amine to form imine and that will isomerize to enamine. Okay. That enamine can undergo Diels-Sahl reaction. This can be made from this immunocyclopropane. Okay. The immunocyclopropane. So, we know if you have a double bond then it is called vinyl cyclopropane. So, vinyl cyclopropanes are known to undergo vinyl cyclopropane rearrangement to give cyclopentene. Okay. Vinyl cyclopropanes are known to undergo vinyl cyclopropane rearrangement upon heating to form cyclopentene. He thought about a similar reaction instead of the double bond, he wanted to use an imine. Okay. So, that way he can get dihydropyrrole. Okay. How this can be obtained? This can be obtained from this cyanide and you can treat with a 1 2 dibromo compound base and an 1 2 dibromo compound you can easily introduce the cyclopropane unit here. Then you know some functional group transformation one can easily get the starting material. So, now let us see how he has really carried out the total synthesis. First let us see the starting materials how he prepared. As I said first uh, the phase transfer mediated, base catalyzed, the cyclopropanation took place. Then you have a cyanide and that cyanide should be converted into 
you know aldehyde and then subsequently amine. So, first reduce that with dibol, so cyanide is reduced to aldehyde. Now, you treat with benzylamine, okay, it forms the corresponding skiff base, okay, benzylamine and then the imine. This upon treatment with TMS chloride and sodium iodide, okay, so that the nitrogen lone pair will attack the TMS, nitrogen lone pair will attack the TMS and the TMS chloride and TMS iodide, sodium iodide to form TMS iodide in situ. Okay. So, that iodide will come out. So, now you will have this intermediate. Now, what will happen? The iodide which came out that will attack the cyclopropane and it will open the cyclopropane and the double bond will neutralize the positive charge on nitrogen which will lead to the formation of this intermediate. So, now the lone pair on nitrogen will attack carbon bearing the iodide thus forming the 5 membered ring and the loss of TMS will give the first starting material which is required. However, if you have looked at the retrosynthesis, you do not you don't need benzyl group here, what you need is ester group that NCO2 amine okay. and also this nitro group should be reduced to corresponding amine. So, both can be done easily and first if you treat this N benzyl with chloromethyl formate, easily one can replace benzyl group with ester okay, corresponding COTME. Now, the nitro group can be reduced by transfer hydrogenation method. So, the ammonium formate in the presence of palladium charcoal in situ it will generate hydrogen, carbon dioxide and ammonia. Okay. So, that will reduce the nitro group to amine to get your the first starting material. Okay. So, this is fragment A we can keep it. Then you need an aldehyde to form an imine is not it. So, for that he started with this iodo alcohol, this is normally prepared from the corresponding triple bond and then CH2OH by treatment with LIH and iodine. Okay. So, this is a standard reaction one can easily prepare from like this compound with LIH and iodine. Okay. Then you do radical reaction, so upon treatment with tributyltin hydride vinyl radical is formed that vinyl radical will add to alpha beta and saturated ester here it is methyl acrylate to get this compound. Okay. Now as I said next step is the oxidation of the allylic alcohol to get aldehyde that is what is required to form the imine. Okay. So, now we prepared both the starting materials the next step is to combine these two. So, when you combine these two, so you first it will form an imine skiff base then it will undergo because you have an extra double bond it will undergo isomerization to generate this diene. Once a diene is there and already dienophile is present, then it, if you heat it, it can undergo intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction. Before that, this amino group is protected by treating with chloromethyl formate, then you heat it, you get the cyclohexene ring. So, if you look at carefully not only you get cyclohexene ring, but there are two rings okay, 1, 2. There are two rings which are formed using the Diels-Alder reaction. Okay. So, now you see from 7 membered ring because strychnine has 7 membered ring. Now, how many rings are formed? 4 rings. So, you need 2 more, 3 more rings. So, how 3 more rings are constructed? You can see one can easily connect these two. Okay. If you easily connect these two, that will form one more ring that is a fifth ring, fifth ring. So, for that you treat with base and heat it. First when you treat with base and heat it this protecting group will go. Okay. Now, the N minus which is formed intramolecularly will attack the ester and form the corresponding lactam. Okay. So, now the fourth ring also is formed. Okay. At the same time that N COTME also here, N COTME also is removed. Now, for the HEC reaction, you have to attach the side chain at NH. Okay. So, this is also you know very easy to make. Okay. So, treat with sodium hydride, you pick up this proton, then quench with this bromide. You can see the HEC precursor is ready now. Once you have this, then treat with palladium acetate and tetrabutyl ammonium chloride in the presence of inorganic bases like potassium carbonate, it undergoes intramolecular HEC reaction to give this compound. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
six rings are already formed. Okay, so now only the seventh ring, that is a seven member ring, should to be formed. So that is very very easy. So remove the protecting group. Remove the protecting group. So any fluoride source, for example, if you use tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, so TBS group can be removed. Once you remove that, that is isostricnine, and we all know that if you have isostricnine, if you treat with base. So, the double bond will migrate and oxamicyl will take place to give strychnine. So, this is one of the you know shortest and clever synthesis of strychnine reported by Viresh Rabal in 1994. So, now we will move to the, the third total synthesis first was Woodward uh, which we discussed, the second one which we discussed was Viresh Rabal, it is not in the chronological order but we whatever we discussed. There are two, one by Woodward, second one by Viresh Raval and third one is by Overman. Why Overman synthesis is important? Because this is the first asymmetric total synthesis of strychnine reported in the literature. Okay. And what are the key reactions he used? One key reaction which he has used was aza cope manich reaction. I will come to that what is the aza cope manich reaction later. Okay. And overall he took about 20 steps. Okay, 20 steps to complete the total synthesis and with an impressive 3 percent overall yield. Considering the complexity of this molecule, 3 percent overall yield is a very, very uh, good uh, yielding total synthesis. Let us see how he has done the retrosynthesis. The earlier two retrosynthesis we saw went through isostrychnine, okay, Woodward's as well as uh, Viresh Rabal, whereas Larry Overman's retrosynthesis went through wheel and gumleach aldehyde. So now if you have wheel and gumleach aldehyde, if you treat with malonic acid, if you treat with malonic acid and heat it, this aldehyde is converted into strychnine. Okay, in one step you can do that. So either you have to go synthesize isostrychnine or wheel and gumleach aldehyde to synthesize strychnine in one step. So how this wheel and gumleach aldehyde is made or thought to be made by Larry Overman. So, he thought if you look at this, this is nothing but an aldehyde, is not it? Nothing but an aldehyde. So, he thought ideal precursor should be an ester, more stable compared to aldehyde, it should be more stable. So, the precursor should be an ester and an alcohol. Once you reduce the ester, the alcohol will immediately cyclize to form the lactal. So, this is a logical precursor for villain gumleach aldehyde. So, the next step. If you see this, so if you have a ketone, okay, when you have a ketone, one can easily introduce the ester next to that, okay, one can easily introduce the ester next to that. Now, this NH2 here, the protected one upon removing the protecting group, you will have NH2, that can form imine with the ketone, okay. Then it can undergo isomerization to form enamine, okay. So, basically, in two steps, one can make this compound from here. Okay. So, now look at this. So, this compound can be redrawn like this. This compound can be redrawn like this. I just leave it for 30 seconds for you to visualize. So, if you see this 5 member ring, so that 5 member ring is here, and then you have the aromatic unit, and then you have the 6 member and then 6 member, both are behind. Okay. Just try to understand, okay. this is very important when you go from here to further retrosynthesis. Okay. Okay. Now let us see how he made this. This is where as I said, he used, he used a very, very simple but efficient key disconnection. If you look at this intermediate, Okay, alpha and beta. At the beta position with respect to ketone, you have a nitrogen. So, you can call it as beta amino ketones. In literature, when you want to make beta amino ketones, the best reaction you will consider is Manich reaction. All beta amino ketones can be easily made by Manich reaction. So, the precursor for this should be this imenium ion. So, now what will happen? You can make a negative charge that is enolate, then intramolecularly attack 
and neutralize the positive charge on the nitrogen of iminium salt. Okay. Now this if you look at can be obtained by an aza copier. If you look at this 1, 5 diene 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 you have 1, 5 diene when you have 1, 5 diene if you heat it it should undergo co-prearrangement. But one of the carbon is nitrogen so it is called aza co-prearrangement. So if you heat it you will get this product this is called aza co-prearrangement. Okay, this is manage. Okay. Now this asa co-prearrangement, how will you get it? So you have a nitrogen and an epoxide. That nitrogen can come and open the epoxide, okay. you will get this alcohol. And the nitrogen if you treat with formaldehyde you get the corresponding immunium ion. Okay. So, the precursor for this is this. Later this can be easily obtained from this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, once you have alpha beta unsaturated ketone there are two double bonds one is electron deficient other one is electron rich. The electron deficient double bond can be easily epoxidized by alkaline peroxide and afterwards you can convert the ketone into double bond. Okay. So, in two steps you can get this intermediate. Now this can be obtained from a carbonyl still lake coupling reaction. You have a vinyl stannine and then iodo aniline. Now if you do a still lake coupling in the presence of carbon monoxide then you can get the insertion of carbon monoxide here to get corresponding alpha beta and saturated keto. Okay. So this is commercially available, this is available in the cylinder. Now next we have to see how this can be made. Okay. So, take this compound and obviously whenever you have vinyl stannine, okay, whenever you have vinyl stannine, it is easy to make from corresponding alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, you reduce a double bond and then generate the enolate, okay, reduce a double bond, you alpha beta unsaturated ketone, reduce a double bond and generate the enolate and that can be converted into tributyl tin derivative. And this alpha beta unsaturated ketone can be obtained from this cyclopentene derivatives. Okay. So, this is this is normally done using a palladium catalyzed reaction and this can be obtained from this mono protected alcohol and that is normally obtained from cyclopentadiene. Okay. These are all well known reaction. Okay. Now, let us see how the synthesis of this compound natural product worked. Okay. And before that I should explain so slightly about uh, aza cope manage reaction. Okay. So, this is 1,5 diene okay. and you have a nitrogen. So, you can call it as uh, aza cope okay. then that should give you this compound. Okay. Now, the iminium ion if this is oxygen okay, then this can come and neutralize the positive charge. So, this is managed reaction. So, a combination of co-prearrangement that is asa co-prearrangement followed by managed reaction can give a 5 membered compound. Okay. This is what exactly he has cleverly used in the total synthesis of technique. Now, let us see first he, how he made a starting material. So, cyclopentadiene mono epoxides are well known one can easily prepare using paracetic acid and you treat with uh, palladium tetrachis compound and acetic acid as the nucleophile. So, one can easily open this uh, the epoxide okay, to get the racemic compound. Okay, one side you have alcohol, other side you have acetate. Now, make the second alcohol also acetate and this can be easily resolved using an enzyme and that will give you so, only one isomer uh, you can isolate. So, this is optically active and you get in 99 percent E. Okay. Now, the other portion that is the iodoaniline portion. So, you can take 2 iodoaniline okay, and then protect with this dimethyl urea 
in the presence of formaldehyde ok in the presence of formaldehyde. So, this is the formaldehyde coming from it forms basically it forms uh, imenium ion and then nitrogen and nitrogen attacks and it undergo 1 4 addition ok. So, this starting material is prepared the other starting material is prepared. So, then what you do first you protect this alcohol as carbamate because allylic carbamate is required for palladium catalyst alkylation. So, once you have this then treat with this beta keto ester ok this beta keto ester. So, what will happen your pi allyl complex will form and the nucleophile will attack here. So, that will give you this compound ok. This, chi this chiral center is not fixed and no problem one can reduce the ketone to get corresponding alcohol and at this point you know the ratio was 20 is to 1 and next is you have to introduce a double bond here. That means you should make this hydroxyl as a good living group simple treatment with DCC simple treatment with DCC gives the corresponding alpha beta and such a ester ok. This alpha beta and such a ester when you reduce with dibol it will do two things one the acetate also will be reductively cleaved acetate also will be reductively cleaved and then ester will be reduced to get the primary alcohol. Now, the primary alcohol you protect it as tips ether ok primary alcohol is protected as tips ether and this allylic alcohol can be oxidized to get the corresponding eno ok any oxidation can do but they have done Jones oxidation. So, once you have this alpha beta and such a ketone then you do treat with L selectride. So, L selectride adds hydride in a 1 4 fashion in this then that enolate is quenched with phenyl N triplate ok. So, this is this will give you corresponding enol triplate ok. This enol triplate can be exchanged with hexamethyl ditin ok. So, if you couple with palladium and then O triplate will be replaced with corresponding trimethyl tin compound ok. So, this is fragment A. So, now you have fragment A and already you we made fragment B. So, combine these two using still a coupling in the presence of carbon monoxide ok. So, what it what it give is the expected alpha beta and saturated ketone. Once you have this alpha beta and saturated ketone the next step is to introduce the epoxide. Of course, alpha beta and such ketone if you want to epoxidize in the presence of other double bond then you have to treat with alkaline hydrogen peroxide. So, you can use triton B and then tertiary butyl hydroperoxide that gives the alpha epoxide predominantly ok. So, once you have this alpha epoxide now the next step is to remove the tips group ok you have to remove the tips group convert that into amine ok. So, the tips is removed before removing tips you have to convert the carbonyl into double bond ok that is normally one can do in one step it with a Wittig reagent then followed by removal of the tips give this this should be OH ok. First step Wittig gives the double bond and the second step T buff will remove the tips and you will get alcohol. Now, the alcohol is mesylated and OH is converted into O mesylate making it as a good leaving group. Then this amide attacks the mesylate and you introduce the NHCOCF3 ok. The next step is this NH the lone pair should attack the epoxide and open the epoxide to get the corresponding alcohol. So, that is done using you know simple base this is done with uh, sodium hydride and intramolecularly you can also draw this uh, this compound in a different way for better understanding. So, now the N minus will attack here and open the epoxide and you get the corresponding alcohol ok. Now, it is all set for the ASA cope rearrangement ok. What you should do only thing is this NH should be converted to N double bond ok. 
So, that is very easy if you treat with formaldehyde. So, then you get the corresponding imenium and it does not stop there. So, it undergoes uh, the Asako rearrangement and followed by managed reaction to give this. Okay. So, this is as planned we could successfully use the Asako and then the managed reaction. Okay, now, we will re redraw this. So, once you redraw this, this is what you got. Okay. So, what is left is now you have to introduce the ester here and remove this and then form the enamine. Okay, that is the next step. So, you can treat this ketone with the LDA and then Manders reagent cyanomethyl formate, you get the corresponding ester and the same time after you work up with the 5 percent HCl methanol then you can remove this and it forms NH2, the NH2 attacks the carbonyl and it forms the enamine. Okay. So, now from this particular route already you can see 5 rings are formed, 5 rings are formed. So, only one more ring to form to get the VLAN Kamlich aldehyde, one more ring. Okay. So, what you should do? You should reduce, reduce this double bond. Okay. So, that is straightforward you treat with zinc dust in methanol you, you reduce the double bond, but however the chiral center here is a mixture. Okay. So, that if you treat with sodium ethoxide and methanol then the tall ester gets epimerized to get the required beta. Okay. Now, once you have the beta 1 next is to reduce that with dibol. So, dibol ester is reduced to aldehyde as soon as the aldehyde is formed alcohol attacks that gives you the corresponding lactol, is not it? That gives you corresponding lactol. Then you treat with malonic acid and astigonide reflux it, it will it will directly give strychnine. Okay. In one part you can take VLAN gumlich aldehyde and that will convert uh, that will be converted into strychnine in one step. Okay. So, if you look at the synthesis of uh, strychnine by Overman, it involved a very very simple and uh, important key reaction that is Asakop and manage in one part. The Asakop reaction followed by manage reaction to get the 5 membered ring with all the stereo centers in place. Okay. That is the beauty of this particular synthesis and second important thing is this is the first asymmetric synthesis of technine reported in the literature. Okay. So, thank you with this I will stop here and then we will discuss a couple of more total synthesis of technine in the next lecture. Thank you.